Hey there, and welcome to a deep dive tailor-made just for you. That's right. We're diving into your request about um, the current state of computing education, mm -hmm. specifically your concerns about how to make it more inclusive for girls. So we've been going through this report called The Future of Computing Education. Yeah. It's a deep dive into what's happening in England's secondary schools. Mm -hmm. But um, don't worry, we'll be connecting the docs to the bigger picture as we go along. Absolutely. Think of this episode as your cheat sheet to understanding the challenges, what's being done about it, and most importantly, how all of this relates to you. Exactly. What we're talking about today applies to all of us interested in making sure everyone has a fair shot in tech. Right regardless of where they live. Okay, so the report starts by taking us back to 2014. In England, there's a huge shift from a broad focus on information and communications technology, or ICT, yeah. to a curriculum that was much more heavily weighted towards computer science. Right. The goal was pretty ambitious to make England a science and technology superpower. Sure. I mean, who wouldn't want that, right? It sounds great on paper. Yeah. And on the surface, the thinking made sense. Mm -hmm. You know, the idea was to introduce a more rigorous study of computer science with a real emphasis on programming. Okay. Essentially equipping students with the skills to actually build the future. Yeah, because in today's world, knowing how to code is like having a superpower. Mm. But And this is where your question comes. And this shift to a super tech-heavy curriculum had some unexpected side effects. Yeah. Especially for girls. Unfortunately, <laughs> that's right. The report points to a pretty dramatic decrease in the number of girls choosing to pursue qualifications in computing okay. after this change happened. Okay, so give me the numbers. How bad are we talking? It's significant. In 2023, only 21% of students taking the GCSE computer science exam. Mm -hmm. That's their big exam at the end of secondary school were girls. Now, if you compare that to 2015, right. back when the ICT GCSE was still in place, Girls made up 43% of the students. Oh. That's a huge drop. More than half? So what happened? I mean, this initiative was supposed to turn England into a tech powerhouse. Right. But instead, it seems like it discouraged girls from even considering the field. What went wrong? That's the million-dollar question, isn't it? Yeah. And it would be way too simplistic to just say, oh, girls just don't like to code. The reality is far more nuanced than that. The report actually digs into several factors. Okay. One of the biggest is this perception that computer science is simply too difficult. Yeah, I can see where that perception comes from, especially for someone like me who didn't exactly grow up surrounded by computers. It can feel intimidating. Exactly. And it's not just a perception. The report highlights some pretty compelling research. Okay. The GCSE computer science exam is statistically one of the most challenging GCSE exams for students, period. So it's not just in their heads. No. The data actually supports that computer science is a tougher subject. Precisely. And the report quotes the teacher. Okay. Who sums up this concern perfectly. Why should I encourage my daughter to take computer science? Mm -hmm. Just because statistically the grade boundaries are set up to give her a better chance of success in other subjects. Wow. That really highlights the dilemma. Yeah. If a student is statistically more likely to do better in other subjects, right. why would they put themselves through a course that's considered significantly more challenging? Yeah. Even if they find the subject matter interesting. That's exactly the issue. Right. It creates a kind of academic pressure. Right. And that brings us to another crucial question raised by the report. Mm -hmm. Is the curriculum too narrowly focused? Okay. Is it so fixated on these purely technical elements of computer science Yeah. that is missing out on things that might appeal to a wider range of students, including girls? That's such an important question to consider. Yeah. And it makes a lot of sense that a one-size-fits-all approach might not be the best way to get everyone excited about the world of computing. Right. Because what we call computing or tech is so much broader than just writing code. Exactly. So what does the report suggest? Are there specific areas within computing that girls tend to gravitate toward? Yeah. That maybe this hyper-focused curriculum is missing? That's a great question. And the yeah. report actually does highlight some interesting findings. Yeah. The report found that girls at key stage three, okay. that's around ages 11 to 14 for our listeners who aren't familiar with the UK system, right. showed a lot more interest than boys in areas like digital media, uh -huh. working on projects, creating presentations. Interesting. So those areas were actually a bigger part of the old ICT curriculum. Exactly. And what's fascinating is that these areas often involve collaboration, okay. visual creativity, yeah. using tech for communication. It's less about the hardcore coding aspect and more about 
using digital tools to bring ideas to life. That makes a lot of sense. It tracks with what we know more broadly about how girls are often encouraged to be more creative and collaborative. Absolutely. And this isn't to say girls aren't interested in coding right. or that they can't excel at it. Right. It's more about recognizing that there are many pathways into the world of tech. Okay, so maybe bringing back some elements of that broader ICT approach could be a good starting point. Yeah. After all, computing isn't just about being a coding whiz. Right. It's about using technology to create, to solve problems, to communicate in every field imaginable. Precisely. And the report really drives her to the point that we need to be showing students the sheer breadth of what's possible with computing. Yeah. It's not just about landing a software engineering gig at a tech giant. Yeah. It's about equipping them to use these skills in whatever field they're passionate about. Right. Whether that's healthcare, fashion, music, environmental science, mm -hmm. you name it. I'm with you on that. We need to broaden the horizons of what computing even means. Yeah. Especially for girls who might not see themselves represented in the stereotypical tech bro image. Right. But speaking of representation, let's talk about another crucial factor the report brings up. The power of role models. Absolutely. Right. You know how it is when you see someone who looks like you, who comes from a similar background as you succeeding in a particular field, it plants a seed. Yeah. It makes you think, hey, maybe I could do that too. Right. Like, I remember being a kid and looking up to athletes, musicians, even fictional characters thinking, that's what I want to be when I grow up. Role models are so important for young people. They really are. <laughs> and when it comes to computing, the report found that when they asked students to name famous figures in the field, yeah. the responses were, well, a little predictable. Let me guess Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, Mark Zuckerberg, the usual suspects. You got it. <laughs> the big five tech entrepreneurs dominate student responses. And what do they all have in common? Yeah. Besides being incredibly successful, they're all white and they're all male. It's like the tech bro starter pack became synonymous with the entire field of computing. Yeah. No wonder girls might not see themselves represented in that narrow image. It's a huge problem. And to the report's credit, they don't shy away from addressing it. Okay. This lack of diversity in how we portray computing not only reinforces harmful stereotypes, but also limits students' perceptions of what's possible. So how do we change that? Where do we find these diverse role models, these hidden figures in tech who can inspire the next generation of innovators? That's where it gets really exciting. The report emphasizes the need to go beyond the big five and showcase individuals from all walks of life. Okay. Women, people of color, people with disabilities, mm -hmm. people who are using computing in every field imaginable. And you know what they found? What's that? When students are exposed to role models who are relatable, especially those who are using their skills for social good, it actually increases their desire to pursue computer science themselves. Wow, that's powerful. Yeah. There's something really inspiring about seeing people use their tech skills to make a real difference in the world. Absolutely. It's not just about the technical skills themselves. It's about connecting them to a larger purpose. I completely agree. So we've talked about the need for a more inclusive curriculum and the importance of showcasing a diverse range of role models, but it sounds like there's a lot of work to be done. Where do we even begin to tackle this? You're right. It's a complex issue. But luckily, the report lays out some really practical steps we can take. Think of it as a roadmap for driving real change in computing education. I love a good roadmap. Give me some of those key stops along the way. First and foremost, the report calls for curriculum reform. And I'm not just talking about tweaking a few things here and there. It's about fundamentally broadening the GCSE options to include things like digital media, data science, even critical thinking about technology's impact on society. Remember we were talking about how those areas tend to resonate more with girls. Yeah, that's right. So it's about creating a curriculum that's both engaging and relevant to the issues facing the world today. Exactly. <laughs> but it's not just about what we teach. It's also about how we teach it. The report stresses the importance of investing in teacher training. And I'm not just talking about technical upskilling either. It's about providing ongoing professional development, especially when it comes to inclusive teaching practices. That makes sense because a teacher who understands how to create a welcoming and supportive learning environment can make all the difference for a student who might not initially see themselves as a tech person. Couldn't agree more. And this focus on inclusivity needs to extend beyond the classroom as well. The report recommends embedding EDI principles. That's equality, diversity, and inclusion into every aspect of computing education. 
from the resources we use to how we guide students towards future career paths. So it's about creating a culture of inclusivity from the ground up. I like it. What else does the report highlight? Well, remember those diverse role models we were talking about. The report suggests showcasing them at every opportunity. And I don't just mean putting up a poster in the computer lab. It's about bringing in guest speakers, organizing field trips to companies that are doing innovative things with technology and highlighting the stories of people from all backgrounds who are using their computing skills to make a real difference in the world. I love that idea. Let's get those inspiring stories front and center and show students all the amazing things they can achieve with a computing education. Exactly. And finally, the report really emphasizes the need to make those connections between what students are learning and potential career paths. We need to show them how the skills they're developing in the classroom translate into a wide range of exciting and fulfilling careers. Because when students can envision a future for themselves in a field, they're much more likely to stay engaged and excited about learning. Exactly. And here's another crucial insight from the report. It's not just about formal education in the classroom. Informal learning opportunities like after-school programs, coding camps, even just tinkering around with technology at home, those play a huge role too. That makes a lot of sense. Not everyone thrives in a traditional classroom setting. Sometimes that spark of passion comes from exploring and experimenting on your own terms. Exactly. And when we create inclusive and welcoming spaces for that kind of informal learning, it gives students the freedom to try new things, make mistakes, and discover their own unique path in the world of technology without the pressure of grades or exams. So we've covered a lot of ground here, from curriculum changes to the importance of role models to the power of informal learning. What's the big takeaway here? What do you hope our listener walks away with today? The future is digital. There's no question about that. But it's up to all of us to make sure that future is inclusive. This report may have focused on England, but these challenges and opportunities are universal. So I think the question for our listener today is this. What can you do right here in your own community to champion inclusive computing education? That's such a powerful question. And it brings it home for all of us. We've been talking about some big picture solutions like curriculum reform and teacher training, but change can also start small, right? Yeah, absolutely. Even small actions can have a ripple effect. Maybe you volunteer at a local school or after-school program to teach kids basic coding skills. Maybe you mentor a young girl who's interested in STEM. Maybe you simply talk to the young people in your life about the incredible women and people of color who are changing the world with technology. Those are all fantastic ideas. And for our listener who wants to dive even deeper into this topic, we'll be sure to link to the full Future of Computing Education report in our show notes. It's full of even more insights and recommendations. This is just the beginning of the conversation, and we're so excited to see what you do with this knowledge because when we empower everyone to participate in the digital world, we all benefit. Couldn't have said it better myself. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive into the future of computing education. Until next time.